Coming up on today's show, Elon Musk's massive multi-billion dollar pay package is approved by Tesla shareholders, but Musk has a lot of work to do before he'll see any of that money. There's concern that the new Nissan Leaf is suffering restricted DC quick charging and thus maybe not great for long distance trips. And the world of autonomous vehicles reels as the world's first autonomous vehicle pedestrian fatality occurs. These stories and more coming next. It's time for another weekly roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. And today we've got a bumper stash of stories to share. So let's get on with some good news for all you Tesla fans out there. This week, Tesla's shareholders voted overwhelmingly in favor of a new multi-billion dollar compensation package for company CEO Elon Musk. The vote took place at a special meeting of Tesla shareholders at the Fremont facility in California, where Tesla makes the Model S, Model X and Model 3 electric cars. In total, the pay package has the potential to make Musk the richest man in the world, but in order to actually receive all of the shares promised by the deal, which could net him upwards of $55 billion, Musk must ensure Tesla's value increases to more than $650 billion by achieving a number of set goals over the next 10 years. If Musk doesn't succeed, he doesn't get paid a dime. And in the interim period, he gets nothing from the company. I don't have the time to go into all the details of the pay deal, but it's worth noting that the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund, which owns just under half a percent of Tesla, voted against the pay deal. It didn't say why, but it's worth noting the fund is also the thing paying for Norway's massive electric car incentive scheme and the money is obtained, or much of it, from the proceeds of Norway's massive natural gas and oil deposits. With a real-world range of around 150 miles, 240 kilometers per charge, and the capability to rapid charge at compatible Chadamo DC quick charging stations, you'd think the new 2018 Nissan Leaf, while a little short on range, could make long-distance trips without too many hiccups. But as our good friend Jonathan Porterfield from EcoCars in Orkney, Scotland, illustrated this past weekend, the new 40 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf restricts DC rapid charging power by more than 50% after the second rapid charge on any long distance trip, presumably due to a lack of active thermal management in the battery. Challenging YouTuber James Coates and a local Hyundai Ioniq owner, also called James, to a race from Leicestershire, UK to Aberdeen, Scotland, a trip of more than 400 miles or 640 kilometers, Jonathan arrived three hours after the Ionic and long after the previous generation shorter range leaf. And that doesn't look good for Nissan. I've included a link to Jonathan's video below and I've reached out to Nissan for a statement on the issue. So I'll update you when I get something back. Despite this disturbing news, however, Nissan reports that the Leaf is now Europe's fastest selling car with more than 20,000 orders received across Europe since its autumn launch. I should note, however, that Nissan is using orders rather than deliveries in its publicity around this story, a distinction that's important to make as, just like any other automaker, orders do not necessarily equal deliveries. And given the previous news story and the various people I've heard of who are cancelling their Leaf orders out of concern of a rapid charging, it's difficult to say how actual sales will reflect all those orders. From concerning battery behavior to hopefully a battery breakthrough now that's about to hit the market in the form of a silicon anode for electric car battery packs that could increase energy density by 20 to 40 percent over current graphite anode cells. Announced five or so years ago, this technology has successfully made it through hours of testing and, says the Wall Street Journal, is now at a stage where many high-profile automakers are testing it in their cars in collaboration with a handful of battery companies which have spearheaded the new technology. BMW is one such company and it says it hopes to see a battery capacity boost of around 10 to 15 percent above the increases it's already predicted for current battery technology. While testing is still undergoing, the Wall Street Journal says that consensus among the various companies is that we'll now see these new battery cells reach production readiness in just a few years' time. So get ready for a longer range, cheaper battery pack. There's something of a rivalry hotting up now between Tesla and Porsche, with the latter recently unveiling its new SUV variant of the Mission E that could go head-to-head -head with Tesla's Model X. And this week, Porsche has upped the ante even more, with Lutz Mejk, deputy chairman of the executive board, telling Gearbrain that he believes Tesla's supercharger business model is unsustainable, adding that Porsche's charging network for its customers would be a sustainable business. 
Granted, he admitted Porsche will charge more for customers to use the network than Tesla does theirs, calling it a service that Porsche hopes to earn money from. But given the Porsche Mission E and Mission E Cross Turismo aren't exactly cheap, everyday affordable cars, I'm guessing there won't be too many issues there for Porsche customers in terms of paying for access. But while Tesla did recently increase the cost of supercharging for non free for life customers, it's difficult to see just what Porsche stands by making such claims, especially when it doesn't have a current charging network, other than perhaps to upset Tesla's legions of fans. Bollinger, the company behind the go-anywhere rugged off-roader known as the B1, has announced this week that it will be offering a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack option for the on-off-road utility truck when it enters production in 2019. At its initial unveiling, Bollinger had promised a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack option and a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, but it seems advances made since the company exited stealth means that it now will be able to up that in concert with the completion of the four door long wheelbase variant prototype. Pricing is still an unknown, but as the B1 is going to be handmade, don't expect it to be cheap. Faraday Future, the electric car company with almost as many lives as Tiddles the Cat, has officially begun construction of its new vehicle factory at a leased Hanford, California site. The company, which has been beset by financial problems over the last few years, posted a video on its YouTube channel earlier this week of demolition occurring at the factory ahead of the installation of its first vehicle production line. Faraday Future says the first production vehicle will roll out the factory on August 28th and has been working hard on testing its fleet of prototype vehicles. But as anyone who's watched Tesla struggle with new model production will tell you, it takes longer than a few months to get a new car up and ready to go out the door. We've already discussed the issues surrounding Nissan Leaf Rapid Charging in this week's video, all of which seem to stem from a lack of active thermal management. But now Professor John D. Kelly from the Auto Technology Department of Weber State University in Ogden, Utah, has weighed in on the argument over Nissan Leaf versus Chevrolet Bolt EV, by providing his educated opinion on which car will enjoy the longest battery life. Professor Kelly, who recently disassembled a Chevrolet Bolt EV battery pack on camera in a series of informative and useful videos, notes that the lack of liquid cooling in the Leaf's battery pack will affect performance, and even reads a segment from the Nissan Leaf owner's manual, opining that Nissan's advice on battery care, which includes discouraging frequent rapid charging, or even charging the car when the battery is hot, makes the Bolt EV's battery pack far superior to the Leaf's, both the previous and current generation models. Over the past week or two, we've heard from many people who've spotted a Tesla Semi in the wild in the US, either being driven on the highway or stopped at a supercharger station. And this week, we learned that's because Tesla has sent a Semi or two on a cross-country road trip, presumably to road test and shake down prototypes to see how they handle the hard life of load hauling. At the same time, Tesla has reportedly held a special event at PepsiCo, showcasing a prototype semi to top PepsiCo executives and employees too. Currently, PepsiCo has more than 100 trucks on order from Tesla, so it's no surprise that Tesla is working hard to ensure one of its founding Tesla Semi customers is happy. I wouldn't be surprised too if we see similar events happening in the future. So if your company has ordered a Tesla Semi, let me know if one turns up at your place of work. Ford officially announced a range of improvements to its Fusion Energy plug-in hybrid this week, thanks to a battery pack upgrade for the 2019 model year that increases battery capacity to nine kilowatt hours. According to Ford, new 2019 Fusion Energy models can travel 25 miles, 40 kilometers per charge, in electric only mode, putting the vehicle on par with the Toyota Prius Prime. That's not a huge improvement on previous years, but given this car is often purchased for fleet use, it could help improve overall fuel efficiency for large fleet operators in companies not yet ready to make the full switch to electric vehicles. As anyone who's traveled in the DC Metro rush hour will tell you, some of the region's major arterial roads are notorious for long tailbacks and traffic jams. And having sat in traffic on the Beltway, 66 and 195, I can tell you it's not fun. But all that hassle could end in the future thanks to a proposed Hyperloop route just unveiled by the Boring Company, which would link up Washington DC to Baltimore via an underground high-speed tunnel cutting the travel time between the capital and one of its major sleeper towns to just 15 minutes. 
The route, served by twin tunnels, still needs to complete planning, but the borrowing company is hopeful we'll see the route become reality as one of the first passenger loop routes in the world. Last Sunday, the first pedestrian fatality involving an autonomous vehicle occurred in Tempe, Arizona, when an Uber self-driving car, under human supervision, hit a pedestrian as she crossed the road with her bicycle at night. The incident has received a lot of attention this week, and I have made a special video on this channel on the topic. But as the week drew to a close, police released harrowing in-car footage showing the moments leading up to the crash. Initially, the autonomous vehicle appeared to have been cleared of any fault, but the footage not only shows the human supervising the car was distracted several times immediately before the accident, but also seems to point to a fault with the car's sensors, as the pedestrian was visible prior to impact. As of now, several companies have halted their own autonomous vehicle programs, and an ongoing investigation is seeking to find the true cause of the accident. Until that happens, we can't say for sure what the outcome will be for self-driving cars. In keeping with the usual editorial policy, I'm not going to show the video or the aftermath out of respect for the victim and her family, and I'd like to ask you all to refrain from making inappropriate comments below. Thank you. And finally, over the past few years, we've seen plenty of so-called second life projects involving used electric car battery packs, where batteries no longer suited to electric car use are placed in massive off-grid and grid-tied energy storage systems. But this week, Nissan unveiled a new use for old electric car battery packs, specially designed solar-powered streetlights that store energy during the day in used Nissan Leaf battery packs and then provide light from them at night. Although currently only in the prototype phase, Nissan hopes to begin series production of these lights in collaboration with 4R Energy Corporation and will be installing the lights in coastal towns still struggling to rebuild themselves following the tragic earthquake and tsunami of March 11, 2011. Nissan may have had a tough time from us in today's show, but I couldn't finish today's show without giving them a nod for this clever and socially conscious project. And that, as they say, is your lot. I'll be back next week with more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss another show. As always, I'd love it if you consider supporting the show through Patreon or if you're so inclined, send us your Bitcoins at the address in the description below. I'll be back soon with more awesome news. So all that's left for me to do is wish you a great weekend. Thanks for watching and as always, Keep evolving.